Hello and welcome to this SimScale tutorial on result controls, specifically looking at area averages and forces and moments. So here we have a simple pump project and the way this is set up is there is some fluid. Um, this fluid in this case is water um, and that is being input into a boundary that is located on top here. And that is input at one meters cubed per second, so a, a simple flow rate definition. And water is moving um, through this pump. The impeller is spinning, and it and flow is exiting through this face here, the pressure outlet. Now, what's very typical of these types of cases is that we want to understand what the efficiency is. And this is an incredibly good case to demonstrate some of the result controls available in SimScale that allow you to output things like pressure drop to find hydraulic um, hydraulic power. Alternatively, we might want to find the shaft power or the, the power that we're putting in at the shaft to make this flow happen. And that can be calculated using the torque applied to the pump to maintain that flow. So these are the two things that we're going to talk about. And of course we can do both of those things by using some additional result control. So the first thing we're going to do here is think about the hydraulic power. So hydraulic power is obtained by taking the pressure drop across the pump and multiplying that by the flow rate. So we already know the flow rate because it's input as a boundary condition, but we don't know what the pressure drop is. Now this could be post-processed, but it's much easier if we actually tell it what we're interested in to begin with, and then it's going to output this as a function of time during our solving, which gives it um, a much nicer statistical approach, which means we don't have to do all this complicated post-processing just to find out what the pressure drop is. And to do this, what we can do is we can come down to the result controls, um, under surface data and we can see that we've actually got two options here firstly the area average and secondly the area integral now area average is of course what we're after doing to find out the pressure drop but it's important to note at this stage that if you wanted to find the area integral that could be the um, the flow rate for example over a boundary we could use that so for example if this case was instead set up with two pressure conditions an inlet pressure and an outlet pressure, we could find what the flow rate is by using an area integral. But since we know it already, we're going to um, just concentrate on the area average um, result control. So I've clicked the area average and we can see the kind of um, options we get. Now, we are interested in the area average. We have got the option to change it again up here. Um, the right control is of course going to be based upon the time step and I'm going to say that I want to return a area average result every 10 time steps so I'm just going to put in 10 and then of course we can actually assign both the inlet and the outlet face. Now it's of course good to note that this is a incompressible flow simulation and the outlet boundary condition for this face here was actually zero pascal so we actually expect this face to read zero pascals throughout the um, simulation. And it's only really this face that's going to change, but I like to plot them both on the same graph so I can de see that delta pressure. I'm going to call this one um, pressure drop. There we go. Now, um, we could actually use this um, result control for anything, really. So if we were in a convective simulation or a HVAC simulation, we could understand what some outlet um, temperatures were. Um, or we, we might want to monitor the density at some outlet in a compressible flow simulation. So these are all things um, that you can obtain. And actually, what you'll find is that these um, result controls output the average for every single field that's in the simulation. So now we've obtained the um, the pressure drop across our system. I can actually save that and we can start thinking about how we're going to actually obtain the other value. So that is the, um, the shaft power um, 
from the simulation. So what is the resistance um, that we've got to overcome that is generated by the, um, the impeller spinning the flow or, or pumping the flow? And we can obtain that by um, doing the thing called um, forces and moments result control. So we, we can see here in the result control, we've got um, an item called forces and moments. And if I create a new forces and moments result control, we can actually obtain the forces and the moments in newtons or newton meters. And all we've got to define here is a center of rotation, which happens to be at zero, zero in this case. And also, once again, define the right interval. And I'm going to, once again, pick 10 time steps between readings. And what I've got to do is assign all of the faces that I want to read the forces and moments upon. Now, that is going to be every single face within, or oh, sorry, every single face on the impeller. And I've actually created a predefined selection right here. So you can see that that's, that's assigned for every single face on that impeller. So it's going to read the forces and moments about that um, center point on all of those faces, so on the impeller. And we can use that in combination with um, the rotation speed to actually obtain a power or a resistance power. So now we've got our main result controls defined we could actually think about adding some additional result controls. So we, we, we know that the, the main parameters that we need to calculate the um, efficiency are defined. So we can go and post-process that using these current result sets. But whilst we're here, let's talk about some additional result outputs that we can actually get in this result control section. So firstly, let's touch upon um, probe points. So we could define a probe point to monitor the fields at a certain location and that could be somewhere within the pump itself and just to demonstrate that I can create a new probe point and I might be interested in the pressure explicitly somewhere in this um, in, in this exit now with this probe point we might be interested in say the explicit pressure at a point within the center of this exit pipe. And we can do that actually quite simply by firstly changing the right interval. So I'm going to once again ask for every 10, um, 10 time, time steps. And then we can define what we call a geometry primitive. Now a geometry primitive is something that isn't physically obstructing your um, flow. So it is not something that is physically represented in the geometry, but rather something that's um, there representing something. And in this case, it's representing a point that we're monitoring. So we can create this point and we can define where it's actually located. Now, in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the center of this outlet face using the pick from viewer. There we go. And I'm going to um, move it back in the Z direction. So say to um, minus one, does that work? There we go. And then we could also save that and add another monitor point. And this one could be in the dead center of the, um, the impeller. And I can do the same process. In this case, it's actually um, pretty, uh, pretty well centered for me. I just need to change the X direction. And in that case, I'm going to put minus 1.5 too far minus 1 lovely so that's that's our two monitor points and when we actually um, come back to the monitor points or the probe points um, definition you can see both those geometry primitives are pre-assigned to our probe points result control now this is going to do very similar to our uh, um, pressure drop in the fact that it's going to return all of the fields. So if we had pressure, um, it would it would actually return the pressure at those two locations for every ten time steps. It would also return the velocity, the temperature if it was in the simulation, the density if it was in the simulation, just as an example. So this is a really good um, way of finding out what the results are at certain locations within your geometry 
And you can use this not only to output final results, but also to measure convergence. So it's a, it's a good way of you understanding how well your simulation is converging as it's solving, because the, all of these result controls are going to be output as you're actually solving the simulation. And the final, um, the final result control I'm going to actually touch upon are field calculations. Now, there are quite a few different field calculations available, so I'm not going to um, go into each one in depth. But as an overview, um, we look at we can look at um, vorticity. So that is a um, a rotational quantity. So not only the velocity field, but the vorticity. That is the rotational component of um, the flow. And this is very good for looking at um, turbulent problems. We can also output some um, turbulence fields, and in this turbulence field you're going to get the additional fields of Y and Y+. Plus. And this is good for um, making sure that your mesh meshing is sufficient for the job that you're doing. And we can also um, look at wall shear stresses or um, fluxes. So if I, if I actually click on that, for example, um, what we're actually going to obtain here are the, um, the directional shear stresses, which is good for looking at um, maybe the CFD equivalent of oil flows on your geometry. So if you had a car and you wanted to look at the oil flow around a car, you would be after outputting the wall shear stresses. And the final result control that I wanted to show was the pressure fields. So we could do some additional calculations on the pressure fields such that we obtain static pressure um, or total pressure taking into account some reference value. And we can also calculate pressure coefficient fields here. So there's a there's a lot for you to be able to additionally define as well as the um, the default result outputs. So to um to conclude this video, what I'm going to do is show you how you can read some of these um, result control outputs. And I'm going to demonstrate that on the forces and moments and also the surface data as well. So what you can see here is I've actually um, I've started a simulation. Um, so I've taken um, the setup that I briefly described earlier with the um, result control definitions. And what I've done is I've run that simulation. And what we can actually see is if we expand this simulation run, we can see a few of our result controls show in the drop down in the list here. So starting with the area averages, um, we can see that we've got the um, the result control that we defined earlier as pressure drop. And it, you can see that I've actually named it pressure drop here. If we expand that, we can see that actually we get area averages on both the faces that we asked for, remembering that it was this face here and this face here, for all of the variables in the simulation. And the one that we're most interested in is pressure. Now, apart from the fact that we, we could do running this simulation for longer, we can actually see that um, we get results as a function of time. So on the x-axis, we've got the time domain. And on the y-axis, we've got pressure and actually it's um, to the order of five, so it's um, it's actually in bars. So you can see the final result in this simulation was about 2.15 bar. And also you can see that the faces that we've asked for are labelled at the bottom, so we could actually show and hide whatever face we need to here. So another cool thing about these um, result controls is that we can actually download these plots. So we can download them either as a image or a CSV file to get the raw data which is particularly handy if you're processing a lot of faces um, in some sort of script afterwards. Additionally, and very similarly, we can actually see the force plots. So you can see in this case, all of the different components of the forces and moments are listed at the bottom and displayed as a function of time. And of course, if you wanted to show and hide some of these to show the most relevant um, result, which in this case is the pressure moment in the x direction, then we can actually do that by clicking on the ones that you don't want to see. So let me just do that quickly. And there we go. We can see that the final torque value was about 224 newton meters. 
So I hope that gives you um, good visibility over what you can do with these additional result outputs using result control items. Thank you very much for watching this training video on result controls. Thank you.